Fola Day and welcome to another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Today I'm with Adrian, uh, our cybersecurity specialist. How is it going? It's going great. How are you? Thank you so much. All good. So we've got today a very hard subject, which is obfuscation. But before we start it, a uh, question to you. Why do we obfuscate? Well, there are various reasons. If you're a pen tester, for instance, you may want to uh, hide your malicious activities. So you want to make your script unreadable. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, how can we do it then? There are many, many methods you can use. You can combine them together. But in fact, what I want to show you is a tool that combines all of these methods together. Nice. And this is? Uh, this is Invoke Obfuscation. This is, in fact, written in PowerShell itself. Very cool. Uh, you can use that during use your assessment, you know, during penetration test. But even if you are a red te a blue teamer, uh, it's important to use that tool to make sure that your tools can handle that level of obfuscation. Sounds good. Guys, it's going to be tough. Let's begin. Let's begin. Okay, on my screen here you can see PowerShell console. As you know, PowerShell is used very often during penetration tests or during real attacks. There are many benefits of that approach. For instance, you can use PowerShell to download external code from the internet and execute it in the memory. And I have prepared a small example of that. Uh, so let me show you this is a simple Hello World style code. Nothing malicious, but the point is that this code can do anything. And here we have a PowerShell expression. Um, it uses system network client uh, and its method download string to download the code from internet here, pastebin. Uh, then the code is executed using invoke expression. Okay, uh, so I have to admit that this code is pretty simply, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to understand, but also it's easy to detect by security tools because it uses some typical classes, typical methods. There is uh, some URL that it's referring to, and also there's an invoke expression. So I want to make that payload harder to understand, harder to detect, and I can do that by applying some, some minor modifications. So for instance, I can go and remove this system dot part from here because that's not required. The PowerShell already knows where to look for its classes. And I can change the invoke expression into its shorter form, which is IEX. And at the same time, I can already mix the letters and make it uppercase. It doesn't really matter for PowerShell. Um, the other thing I want to do is to play with the strings. So for instance, here we have a string that contains URL. I want to split it so I can put the quotes here and there. And it's fact, it still works. Uh, but I want to do something else. Uh, I will get this part outside the expression and I will use set variable or its shorter form as V uh, to declare new variable. Let's name it like that. Why not? And maybe just use that variable here. Okay, so now that we have uh, part of the string outside the expression, we can try to obfuscate the remaining strings. And we can do that by adding the backticks characters in front of them. Uh, this will work for some of them. For other ones, uh, it will trigger their special meaning. So be careful. For instance, A is a bad character. You can't add a backtick here because you will change the string into something else. But as long as are we careful, you can execute that Okay, let me now show you something else. There's get command uh, cmd let, uh, which we can refer to as get cm as well, that accepts the part of the pattern that you are looking for. So we can get the new object in a different way, uh, but we can also put the wildcard somewhere else. So if we do something like that, uh, maybe like this, 
it will still work and we will get the object that we are looking for. And now we can put that into our expression. So I have to use ampersand uh, to trigger that, uh, but then this works as expected. Of course, there are many other things we could do uh, here. So for instance, uh, this invoke X web expression doesn't have to uh, be in front. It can go at the end. Uh, but now I want to introduce you to something else, to a very awesome framework from Daniel Behanon. The framework is called Invoke Obfuscation. OK, I have the tool uh, already on my disk, so I just have to go to the right directory. Uh, here we have a bunch of files. Uh, I'm interested in the module right now because I want to do import module psd1 and now I have invoke obfuscation cmd led okay it's loaded um, so first thing we want to do is to set the script log Uh, we're going to use the same script that we've been using uh, since the beginning of the video. Okay, the script block is set. Uh, we can use the function test to test if it's working. And here you can see that although we, we haven't obfuscated anything yet, it's being displayed and uh, it works as expected. So let's go to the token submenu now. Uh, here, let's let's see what can happen if we go to the string submenu. Here you have options uh, how you can uh, obfuscate the strings. So we've been using option number one manually. So let's go with number two. And this is a result of a function. So uh, it's slightly harder to uh, see what's going on right now, but you still can see HTTPS here, right? Uh, let's go back. Uh, we can now go to the command submenu and try to obfuscate the commands themselves. Uh, let's use number three this time. Uh, it's getting harder to understand the payload. Uh, let's see what argument can do. Again, we, can, we have a bunch of options we can do. Let's go with number four this time. So we could now go and try other options, but maybe let's do all of them at once. Okay, so this is how our payload looks like right now. Uh, we can still test it to make sure it's still working. It executes as expected. Um, we can now do something else with uh, string, for instance. Okay, so uh, in this menu, we'll be working on the payload as a string, not on particular tokens, but uh, on everything at once. And we can choose number three, for instance, to reverse everything. Okay, so we have to agree that it's, it's pretty hard to understand it as it is right now. Uh, but let's try to encode it anyway. So uh, there are a couple options. Let's maybe go with an octal encoding. So if we do something like that, uh, it's completely unreadable right now. Um, So we can see that this payload still works as expected. Nothing changed in its behavior. So let's see what the compress option does. So now the string is compressed. Uh, note that every time you do apply 
a modification like that, you are getting a different result. So if you're not satisfied with this one, we can undo and apply it again. Uh, apply it again. And you're getting something else. So those are completely different. Of course, it might be hard to really copy those payloads. So instead of copying them, you can either save them to file or, for instance, use a clip command uh, to copy them to your clipboard. Now we have them available. And in that way, we can also make sure that all is working fine. Um, well, let me get back. Lastly, there's a launcher command. All right, in this menu, uh, you can see a bunch of options that allow you to modify how the payload is launched. So for instance, you can even use the um, HTML application to launch the payload or use run DLL. Uh, if we select something like Steam++ uh, and maybe no execution flags. Well, first of all, we can see the payload, but we can also see very handy the way of showing the processes. So this is a process tree. Uh, first, the CMD is used to set some variable. Uh, then again CMD and lastly the PowerShell is executing that. All right. So, so far we have seen that this is a great tool to obfuscate the payloads. But does it make sense to use it if you are in the blue team? Of course, use that to verify if your tools can detect those payloads. So you can also try to decode them manually to understand some of the tricks and also make sure to check out how PowerShell blocks are locked in your system. Thanks for your attention. If you have questions, leave them down below and see you in the next Hex Weekly.